Hello and welcome to Sense Business YouTube channel. Today we will be covering 5.2 Cash Flow Forecasting and Working Capital. Join me in this lesson and I will help you get a star you really, really deserve. Great stuff. So today's lesson's outcome is that we will understand the importance of cash and cash flow forecasting. We will understand why cash is important to a business. We will also understand what cash flow is and how a simple one is constructed and we will understand its importance. We will also interpret a simple cash flow forecast so that we get a better understanding of what cash flow forecast is. And we will also understand and learn how a short term cash flow problem might be overcome. And we will also understand working capital, its importance, the concept. We will cover all this in this lesson. So join me and let's start the lesson. So what is cash? So cash is a liquid asset immediately available for a business to use and spend. So cash includes more than just the physical traditional bills and coins. So it's more than just this dollar bills. It is cash can include any other currencies as well as undeposited checks and amounts in a current account. So we can say that cash is a legal tender. So currency or coins that can be used to exchange goods, debt or service. Sometimes it also includes the value of assets that can be easily converted into cash immediately. So these two are the definition of what cash is and why is cash important to a business? It's important. It is important because cash is also important because it later becomes payment for things that make your business run. So that's why it is important. So expenses like stock or raw materials, employees, rent and other operational expenses. Naturally, positive cash flow is preferred. We'll talk about cash flow in a second. So that's why it's important because if you don't have cash, you're not going to be able to pay your employees. You're not going to be able to rent the building that you're operating in. And you won't be able to pay any operating costs. So this is why it is important for a business to have cash. So what if business has no cash or little cash? So what the problems might be if this happens so the but what you need to understand is that the golden rule for a business is to never run out of cash never so always they need to have cash if they want to be successful and they want to be in the market if you don't have money you don't have a business it's that simple so without money you can't buy what your business needs your staff so staff your business or get other people to do to take care of the small things so you can focus on bigger things so money is everything for a business if they want to be successful because without the actual reason of most businesses today is to make profit and that's why it is important for them to have cash or have money so there are three points you need to remember for your exam. So if you don't have cash or if you have very little cash, you won't be able to pay your employees or suppliers. Remember, these three points are very beneficial for your exam. So you need to remember them. So the, the question might be, what happens if a business has no cash? So you can write down, cannot pay employee wages. Uh, and or uh, suppliers who bring us the raw material or products we sell so production of goods will stop because if you're not paying the suppliers they're not going to bring you the stock that you need to then sell it onwards 
So this, the production will stop overall. And then if you're not paying employees, they're not going to work, are they? Because nobody will want to work for free. So that's why the production will stop. So liquidation, this is where the business stops and sells assets to pay debts. So we talked about this in an earlier video. If you want to watch that, it will help you understand a lot more. So this, these are some reasons or problems that will happen if a business doesn't have cash. Okay, so what is a cash flow? So cash flow is the total amount of money being transferred into and out of a business over a period of time. So that's what cash flow means. So then we have cash inflows and we have cash outflows which I'll talk in a which I'll talk about in next slide so what are your cash inflows so cash inflows are any money received by a company due to sale of products and services financing investments money received from bank loans sale of assets capital raised from selling shares so any money that comes into the business is a cash inflow. So cash inflows are used to measure the overall financial health of a business and a company with a large and stable cash inflow can be considered to be in a good financial position. So you need to remember that because it is quite important for your exam. Okay, so now we're going to talk about what cash outflows are. So this is all the money going out of the business. So inflows are money coming into the business. Outflows are money going out of the business. So this can be money paid out by an organization as a result of operating activities, investment activities and finance, financing activities. So what you need to remember for your exam is that you'll need to remember these key points. So a business's out cash outflows might be purchasing of stock or inventory, buying assets such as building, machinery, so employee wages and salaries, paying dividends, or servicing or maintenance of company equipment, paying back any debt held by the company. So these are your outflows. You need to remember your outflows and inflows of a business because you could relate that to any business. Nearly all businesses have these outflows and you can write them down on your exam if the question do pop up. So, now we're going to talk about or familiarize ourselves with what cash flow cycle is. So this is what cash flow cycle looks like. Remember that cash flow cycle is also known as cash conversion cycle. And the cash conversion cycle, shorted as CCC, is a key measurement of small business liquidity. So the cash conversion cycle is the number of days between paying for raw materials or goods to be resold and receiving the cash from the sale of goods either made from that raw material or purchased for resale. So it's the time between getting a product from a supplier, let's say, and selling it and getting the cash back for what you have bought from the supplier and the profit or if you have purchased raw materials so the time that you purchase the raw materials and to the time where you made a product and sold it is known as cash conversion cycle so the cash conversion cycle measures the time between outlay of cash and the cash recovery okay so the cycle is a measure of the time that funds are tied up in the cycle. So the CCC measure illustrates how quickly a company can convert its products into cash through sales. So the shorter the cycle, 
the more work and capital a business generates and the less it has to borrow because if you're making something quickly then you're selling it quickly and then you're making profit then you repeat that process over and over again as you can see on this picture and your profit slowly 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 increases if you are doing it right so cash is needed by the business for operation products are produced products are sold customer pay cash to the business so this is repeated and this is what cash conversion is or cash flow cycle is great stuff so now let's move on to what cash flow forecast is so now that we understand inflows cash outflows we understand we understand cash flow cycle we are going to talk about cash flow forecast this is our main topic so let's pay good attention to this okay so a cash flow forecast is a plan that shows how much money a business expects to receive in or pay out over a period of time so another definition is it estimates the future cash inflows and outflows of a business and it shows expected balance at the end of each month we know what our inflows are and we know what our outflows are. For a cash flow focus to work, you need to know both of them. So why do businesses need cash flow focus? The most important reason for a cash flow focus is that to make sure that the business can afford to pay suppliers and employees. These two are are our main stakeholders when it comes to cash flow focus. Suppliers who don't get paid will soon stop supplying the business. It is even worse if employees are not paid on time because then the productivity drops, the efficiency drops and everything just goes into pieces. So businesses need, will have or create a cash flow focus when they to start up the business or to show bank managers to get bank loans approved because a cash flow focus is a, a picture, let's say. So it is seeing what they are going to do in the future. So it's like a plan of how much money the business is going to get and how much money the business is going to to spend or to get in so it is to manage its cash flow so these are some reasons why businesses will use cash flow focus to see what's going to happen in a set period of time okay so there's a useful formula you need to remember for your exam so the net cash flow equals cash inflows minus cash outflows. So our formula is net cash flow minus cash inflows. Sorry, net cash flow equals cash inflow minus cash outflow. Well, is our formula that we need to remember for the exam. So we are going to now interpret a simple cash flow forecast and this is what a simple cash flow forecast looks like. So at the begin so we have at the start of the month so this is how much 25 pound we had inflows of money coming into the business so there's 20 pound in January in January, we had £25 at the start of the month, then we had £20 cash inflows, so £20 came to our business, then we had £25 cash outflows we will have, so we need to identify what these are. And then net cash flow is minus 5, so as we said, so 20 take away 5, 25 is negative 5. So that is not good for business. So cash at the end of the month is going to be 20. So now this goes on to February. So February, so whatever is at the end of the month from previous month will be the start of the next month. So 20 for example here and then so on. And then this month we had 25 pound inflows, 30 pound outflows and then we are negative 5 again 
we are left with 15 pounds end of February and then in March we started off with 15 because we ended up with 15 in February then we had 20 inflows 30 outflows and we are negative 10 so we have left with five pound and then in April we started with five our out inflows decreased our outflows also decreased our inflows increased and our outflows decreased and we have five positive five as net cash flow so we have got back 10 pounds so we are heading back towards a positive start so as you can see it tells us how and what we will be expecting as a business to happen in six months for example so this is what cash flow forecast does it gives you an estimate it gives you what the future of spending inflows and outflows are going to be so in your exam you might be asked to fill in missing parts of a cash flow forecast so it for example, the five won't be here. So for example, this five won't be here. You'll be asked to fill that in. And if you remember, I told you whatever the last month ends with, the next month begins with. So this month ends with five. So April begins with five. Because this is what we had at the end of the month. And then we're going to have that at the beginning of next month. And then that's what that is so if you put five there that's a good mark for you there or let's say and uh, this number five might be missing so we know the formula is that cash flow cash inflow minus cash outflow is our net cash flow so 15 take away 10 is five so if this was missing we would put five there and if this was missing then we would look out for what are our inflows we will add them all together and write the answer here so this is what a simple cash flow forecast looks like so the tips business businesses shouldn't have too much cash in bank account as it could have been used in a better way for example expanding the business investing so even thought lots of cash is good for business it's not always too good because instead of having that much money in your bank you could invest it into all the things which will maximize your profit okay so how a short-term cash flow problems might be overcome we could uh, delay supplier payments but we need to be careful with this one because if you delay it for too long suppliers might become worried and then they might stop supplying you altogether so asking debt debtors to pay back more quickly so people that owes money we can ask them to pay back quickly we can apply for a bank loan so businesses can quickly borrow money from the bank however interest will have to be paid on what's been borrowed so if you borrow 1000 you might have to pay 1200 back so delay or cancel plans to purchase new equipment if you don't have cash you need to stop paying or buying any new equipment if your current equipments are okay and there's not a lot of things wrong with it so you need to cancel that so delaying or cancelling plans to purchase new, new equipment such as new machines may significantly reduce cash outflows however this is bad for the business in long term as new machines can increase the efficiency of the business but then again if you need cash you need the cash and you need to to see what's best for your business so purchasing supplies on credit so what you could do is instead of instead of paying your suppliers with cash just pay them by credit this means paying their suppliers at a later date so delay cash outflows however some suppliers may not allow this or may only give discounts to customers who buy who don't buy on credit so you might be losing out so if sometimes the some suppliers will charge extra because you're using credit cards so you need to identify which of these are based for your business only sell in cash not credit so as a business you can sell just with cash not credit so businesses can choose to only sell to customers in cash this means that the business will get 
their money immediately. However, customers may buy from competitors that sell on credit. For example, on Argos, you can buy anything on credit and then pay nothing for three months. So you could do that, but you could also pay with cash. So if somebody wants to buy it with cash, but they go to, for example, so, so, so for example, they go to another shop, let's say Curry's, who don't do credit, interest-free credit. So they're not going to go to Curry's, they're gonna, obviously going to go to Argos and buy it from them because they offer three months option for people to pay the money back. So some customers may choose your competitors instead of you. So we are finished our first part. This is our straight. We are going to quickly jump onto our second part. This one's a short and straightforward. It's only about two slides. So let's understand what working capital is. So working capital is the wealth in the form of money or other assets owned by a person or organization or available for a purpose such as starting a company or investing. So capital means money. Capital just means money. So money available and working capital means money available for a business to pay for day-to-day -day operations. So a useful formula you need to remember for your exam is that working capital equals current assets minus current liabilities. So you might be thinking what are my current assets or what are businesses current assets? This is cash including foreign currency and investments except for investments that cannot be easily liquidated. So you need to remember that. Prepaid expenses, accounts receivable, inventory. These are all your current assets and your current liabilities are sales taxes payable, payroll taxes payable, income tax payable, interest payable, bank account overdrafts or cared expenses and customer deposits. These are your current liabilities. So the importance of working capital is that the working capital is a daily necessity for businesses as they require a regular amount of cash to make routine payments cover unexpected costs and purchase basic materials used in production of goods. It is the process of managing the short-term assets and liabilities so that a firm has sufficient liquidity to run its operation smoothly. So working capital is a lump sum of money that's there for business to help business run operate smoothly and it is very important because if it's not there then you're going to be in trouble so working capital is important because it pays employee wages and salaries it figures out if they are in a good financial position to purchase supplies that are currently on sale for example supplies may give discount to customers that pay by cash and will not pay discount to people that buy on credit so they ensure that they have enough cash for day-to-day -day operations and when you have good working capital you can pay your debts so you are debt free and you can pay your loans everything so that's why working capital is very important so there's a tip for you here so working capital so without working capital you won't be able to stay in business it's that simple okay so I've done a lot of tutorials here and I have got a task for you here because it will be pointless just watching these tutorials and not remembering anything and I have put five questions here which if you answer will definitely help you remember things for your exam so I want you to list four current assets then describe what a cash flow forecast means in, in your own words how a short-term cash flow problem might be overcome what if a business has no cash or little cash list three inflows and three outflows of your college and school so I want you to write them down in the comment section below 
because if you don't write them down you won't remember them and this time that you have been watching these videos will be just wasted so I want you to please write them down and I will mark every single person's answer to make sure that you understand and that you get the A star that you really really deserve okay question time is there any questions please let me know in the comment section below and I will be more than happy to answer it for you the next video will be here so make sure that you watch that also I'm, I'm giving away one iPhone if you watched the last five videos you will understand why I'm giving this iPhone away so make sure you are in the comment section below I will pick one person at random so don't miss out on that either make sure you share like and subscribe to this channel so you can get the latest update for now take care and thank you for joining me in this lesson.